The 60th anniversary specials revealed to fans of the Doctor Who franchise a new Doctor to follow along with. David Tennant stepped down as the 14th Doctor, seeking to live out a life of retirement away from life from saving planets and universes. His bi-generation split his body along with the body of the 15th Doctor, played by Judy Catwell. As 14 lives in a downtime relaxing era with the nobles, 15 steps into the TARDIS to explore the wide wonder of space and time. His first destination is during the Christmas special in the middle of modern day London, England. I applauded the work that Russell T Davies did in reviving the show after so many years left in its abstract ambiguity. While not perfect, the show really brought back that nice charm and sense of wonder during the 68 specials. Now, there's one more special from 2023 to review. The Church on Ruby Road is the final titled special for 2023 and will carry us into the first or 15th season of the show since its revival in 2005. We'll see how Disney and BBC decide to organize the show post signing of their new TV deal. 19 years in the past, a cloaked woman leaves a baby at a church's doorstep. The woman is left to a mystery throughout the episode. I hope RTD understands to answer this question during the next season. I'm sure that there are tons of plot elements he was wanting to explore. The boss was hinted by the meat, the one who waited was teased by the toy maker, and now we have a mysterious woman involved in this episode. She delivers a baby that will play a crucial role in the episode and in the season. The abandoned infant is Ruby Sunday, who later is played by Millie Gibson. She seeks to bind her biological parents via DNA testing. Ruby comes from a larger family of adopted siblings and under the care of Carlos Sunday, played by Michelle Greenidge. Ruby loves her family and appreciates the care of her adoptive mother, but wishes to understand where she came from. Following an interview with Davinia McCall, Ruby encounters a bizarre string of misfortunes. She also crosses paths with the 15th Doctor multiple times throughout the episode. They even share a nice and down-to-earth conversation in the middle of a dance club. The two already have good chemistry, and it already leaves us wondering what kind of companion Doctor dynamic we could be expecting. Donna and the Doctor had their own sassy friendship. The Doctor also has girlfriends and ex-wives in the past while traveling. I'm sure we'll get a less romantic bond and more like a friendship that we saw between both Eleven and Amy Pond, as well as Twelve and Clara Oswald. Either way, I love the casual nature of how both of them meet. Their bond really morphs throughout the episode, and it's really nice to have a down-to-earth story about these two. Later, Ruby's adoptive mother fosters another baby to hold and keep. However, Sinister Goblin sees the child and prompt Ruby to board their airborne ship. She holds a rope ladder and realizes how dire her situation is becoming. The Doctor once again shows up and casually springs into action to help Ruby get to the top of the ladder. The duo are captured by the goblins and are puzzled on how they arrive to Earth. The Doctor unveils the manipulation of time causing Ruby's streak of bad luck. The goblins thrive on the coincidences of Ruby and the baby sharing a Christmas Eve birthday. After a somewhat cringe singing scene, in my opinion, the duo are able to thwart the plans of the goblins and the child is returned to Carla. However, connections between the Doctor and Ruby compelled the goblins to travel back even further and target Ruby as the main infant. They invade the past and decide to take baby Ruby in as both revenge and a quick meal. Jumping into the TARDIS, the Doctor travels back 19 years to save baby Ruby, obliterating the goblins and their ship. I love how Davies understands that while the plot doesn't need to be clever, the stakes of the episode are important for telling the story. You felt the drama and the slow build towards this climatic ending. Hey movie lovers, welcome to Real Talk Movies, your next destination for all things cinema. If you're a big film fanatic like me, smash that like button and hit subscribe. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on future discussions, in-depth reviews, and analysis on all things related to film. Now, back to the video. There is no big mystery or clever workaround for 15. A simple action and an adventure story with very little time travel was able to flex both Gibson and Gatwa's ranges as actors. Gatwa is a nice blend of the 9th and 11th Doctor in terms of both bubbliness and serious sass. The back and forth between Ruby and 15 felt less subtle, but really helps to establish how alien the Doctor still is with others. He is a lone alien traveler most of his life and disassociates with human emotions pretty often. Nine was very similar and was able to slowly progress into a caring and very heroic based character. Eleven was also disconnected from human bonds, minus his romance with River Song and the friendships with the Pawns. This Doctor will be fun to see progress. He could also progressively become more emotionally aware. Or will this Doctor be the one that balances both human emotion and logical and sometimes cold demeanor? 15 already feels different but familiar, and I gotta give the show major credit for casting a talent like Judy Gatwa. His dynamic with Ruby Sunday will be the biggest key in how this Doctor develops and morphs. Back in the present, 
Ruby's son Dade reunites with the doctor and discovers that the man traveled within her life. She decides to find and track the doctor along with his mysterious TARDIS. She is greeted by an older woman named Mrs. Flood. She is happy and excited to see the doctor every time he crosses paths with her. She plays a coy but fascinating neighbor that seems more like a background character at first. She however understands what a TARDIS is and isn't totally surprised to see Ruby disappear alongside the doctor. Who is Mrs. Flood? We can guess the Ronnie, the master, the mistress, all kinds of time lords from the past. She knows about the TARDIS and the doctor, so she's even more mysterious than initially thought. Her character could return next season and help audiences answer some crucial plot arcs. Who took that golden tooth at the end of the giggle? Could Mrs. Flood be working closely with the villain to defeat the Doctor? Maybe she's actually an ally of the Doctor watching over one of his companions. The Doctor also left many companions back on Earth, so you just never know. As for the church on Ruby Road, I found the episode fun and thrilling to follow along. However, the middle of the episode felt a bit slow and the music note was a nice flex for the cast, but the singing scene felt forced and not my favorite in particular. The episode did very well, however, in establishing new characters, but too much experimenting can put off mainstream audiences. But this episode gets a 7 out of 10 for me, but that could change with the rewatching. I am super excited to see what the show brings for us next season. May 2024 is the expected time where we can see more episodes drop for Doctor Who. Do you have big expectations for the show after the introduction of this new duo? into the show or are you already missing David Tennant let me know all those thoughts down in the comment section below and also let me know what are your some predictions for Mrs. Flood do you think she might be a villain a good person or just an old lady share all those thoughts down below thank you for watching today's video and I hope that you enjoyed today's topic if you could hit that sub button that would be awesome hit that like button and boost my video up on the algorithm click that bell so you don't miss any of my videos that get uploaded and if you have some time to spare check out some of these videos on your screen right now